and it's got Eddie Murphy, um, you know, actually acting. Um, <laughs> hey, that's cool. <laughs> it is cool, except he plays, the, like you said, this this militant character who's who's so behind the times, like racist and behind the times that he would have to be somebody at least 10 or 20 years older than he is to be like that way. But it's just written so he can do that, so he can say those things. Another unfunny comedy yeah. bites the Martin Thomas dust. Well, this next one is not a comedy. Double Toasted Live in Los Angeles is gonna be Saturday, April 27th for a night of comedy games and that after party. Let's move into things that are not so fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> things that- It's so quick. I like it. <laughs> things that are not so great. There was a lot of movies that uh, you and I both saw this year, and apparently I saw more that were not as good. I'm excited about this segment because you not only saw more, you have a bunch of things that aren't even on my list. Oh, I we only have one movie on, on our list wow. that is the same, and you know exactly what movie it is. <laughs> it is the movie I think that it, I mean, it clearly <laughs> pissed you off the most this year. It, it did, but I felt like at the time you were defending it, so I didn't expect it to be on your list. I'll, I'll explain. Okay, all right, all right. Okay. <laughs> but just to, just to give everyone a heads up, uh, uh, some of these movies, uh, kind of spoilers, and some of them, I'm not even going to play a clip of the movie. I'm going to play something that is relevant to it that will lead to a, a little bit of a discussion about it in the future okay. of, of what these movies could okay. lead to. Because right. I think at least one of them merits it. But let's get started here. This is I'm going to I'm going to call your honorable mention your number seven. OK, okay. I figured we'd do that one yeah. last. Oh, nah, why not? I, I thought that it was interesting it was on here because I kind of wanted to see this movie, but I'll let the trailer speak for itself. Slides off limits to Ching Chongs. <gasps> Fuck you. <laughs> and that's what Martin is saying to the movie Joyride. This looks kind of funny to me. I don't know, but tell just, me what. Just from that scene, that yeah, that, that, funny. that sold me. I'm yeah, not gonna yeah, yeah. lie. That's the first scene of the movie. Yeah, and, and, and starting out with that was like, okay, this this could be fun. It's when they become adults, and what what drove me nuts about this movie is it's got. It's got a, a setup that I, I thought I would like, and I want to be behind it because, hey, representation, and why can't everybody make raunchy comedies? But it's one of those raunchy com comedies. One, it's a road trip movie, which is just a license to, we don't have a script, so we'll just throw in random bits and gags as we go along. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that kind of raunchy comedy that's not at all smart. It, it just relies on being raunchy to sell the joke. Kind of like uh, Bad Grandpa, would you say? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I, I mean, I was hesitant to bring that movie up because I think we're going to bring it up again. Okay. But, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, similar to that, it yeah, sounds yeah, it's like. Yeah, very, very similar to that, where it's just a bunch of pieces stuck together uh, that if they do connect later, it's because somebody just thought, oh, what if we did this? It's, it was never part of, it never felt like it was part of the plan. They also do that thing that's been happening in a lot of modern um, seat of your pants, uh, um, ad lib comedies, where they throw in a character who's weird for weirdness sake. Mm. There's a cousin who is non-binary and just, just says random weird stuff. It kind of like what they do with did with Kate McKinnon in the Ghostbusters movie. Or I hated that movie. Well, a lot of people did, and it wasn't about sexism. It was just like, man, y'all just kind of just just kind of stitched this together. Yeah, this is this is just one of those. You you're going with them, and it, and it just feels like, hey, we're going to this thing, and we're going to this thing, and somebody thought of, oh, this will be a good piece to stick in there. Does it tie in with everything else? No, but it's just something wacky for the adventure. And and we'll throw in sex a bunch. But also this movie, it's a big thing for the main character to, to find her Chinese roots. Mm -hmm. um, you think they were trying to, I mean, it's pretty obvious you kind of mentioned it, but you think they're trying to capitalize on like uh, what's it called? Crazy rich Asians and being like, this is the wacky version of that. Kind of, a little bit. A little bit of that, uh, which I don't mind. I mean, you know, it's, hey, man, ride the wave. It's it's here. Everybody wants to see it. Sure. It's, it's been denied for so long. Ride the wave. But it is one of those things where the whole time where she's trying to find her Chinese roots, I'm like, all right. Now, I'm not saying I'm an expert at being able to tell uh, authentic. It, well, e uh, East Asians, where they, which part of uh. Asia they come from. Mm-hmm. 
But the whole time I'm looking at this girl and I'm going, she looks Korean than me. <laughs> she, I, I'm just sure she's Korean. Now it turns out it's Ashley Park, the actress, who is Korean. If that's a big thing in the movie, like getting to like, oh, we found your family. Oh, turns out you're Korean. I'm like, yeah, she's Korean. <laughs> that, that, duh. I mean, you, you know, I know it's spoiler and all, but it was just like, man, every, just every, every part of this is cheap. So you heard it here first. Don't take the joy ride. They don't even take you for a good ride. But I, I had it as an as a dishonorable mention rather than on the list because I know there's plenty of people who like the movie. So I'm not trying to. And I, I you know, I get it's, you know, somewhat goal. So the, the virtual signaling that goes along with it. So I'm not trying to step on that. But it's like for me, I was just like, oh, give me a break. I mean, the worst thing a comedy can do is not be funny. And mm -hmm. if it don't work for you, it don't work, yeah, it for, didn't you. work for me. And it I wanted it to. But it, it did not. Yeah. And it seems like uh, comedies this year were not your friend. <laughs> Those uh, are always the worst movies, <laughs> <laughs> usually. Moving on. This is Martin's number four uh, worst movie of the Wouldn't year. Wouldn't it be number five? Hey, man, oh, check number, it out. Sorry. God. Damn it, this is number six. I can die! Fashion your suit! Oh! This is, the, oh, what is that? I, I hear Corey's calling card because it's <laughs> it's tie time, tie, tie, tie time. Tie time, yeah. yeah. I, I called this number six, but this is tied for the number five spot for Martin. This is uh, about my father. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's uh, uh, hot comedian Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah, he was actually in the Mario movie too. He's hot on the stand, on the on the big arena stand up scene. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's funny too. I've seen his stand up. I don't think he's funny doing stand up. <laughs> Man, I'm, I swear I'm not gonna spend the whole night disagreeing with you. But the thing is, but I'm not gonna sit here and say he's not funny because he does, or 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 at least did a, a podcast with uh, Pete Corielli that I first started listening to without knowing who he was. And those two guys are hilarious. Like one of the few podcasts yeah. I would listen to every week. Uh, so I was excited to see a stand up, and I was like. Oh, he's one of these guys that pantomimes all his jokes. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so don't go see his comedy if you're blind. You'll get nothing <laughs> out of just it. Just constantly moving and having to act out everything. But anyway, but enough about that. This movie, this is his vehicle. I'm sure it's based on some of his his routines, and it is it is a a a pitiful. A uh, rehash of of uh, Meet the Parents, or <laughs> it's 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 just that where yes, he's dating a, a girl who lives out in the rich, I don't know, if the Hamptons or something, mm -hmm. and has to bring his father along, and played by De Niro, who just doesn't get these people, and it's a whole you know. Uh, culture clash thing. Oh boy, I just saw that guy messing around with the chimes and shit like that. Yeah, and it's another one of these lazy comedies where they go. We got some bits. Wouldn't it be funny if, hey, wouldn't it be crazy if, hey, what if we did this really raunchy thing right here? Wouldn't it like, be insane if a, a bird was in the middle of the road? Wouldn't yeah. that just be crazy? They, 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 <laughs> however, this isn't high on my list because they did do a one funny thing with that peacock. This movie's so cheaply made. There's a part of me that doesn't want to beat up on it, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it did suck. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, you, I mean, you look at it. You, yeah, it, it doesn't look all that inspired. It just looks like we just brought up Bad Grandpa. It mm -hmm. looks like more of that. It's also one of those movies that probably more people heard about it from me talking about it just now mm -hmm. than when it came out. Your next movie is a movie. I was actually talking to this other streamer. He goes by the name Uncle Joe, the Uncle Joe Show, and he was. I was like trying to get together my list, and this next movie on your list, the Tie Time Number Five. Mm -hmm. uh, this was one that he mentioned. He was like, "This movie sucks." Thanks for going to a special place with me, Carl. Oracle. And that special place is the number five spot, <laughs> Paint, <laughs> on Martin's worst of the year. And, Why and, did and you it's, not it's, like it's it? It's another one of those where I was like, man, this should have had a splash, but nobody heard of it. And for a good, splash of paint. Yeah. And for no, and for, for good reason. Yeah. What you see there is Owen Wilson playing a character who's basically Bob Ross. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you go like, oh, OK, this could be like, you know, a comedy send up of Bob Ross. And everybody's talking about Bob Ross so much, you know, how, how many awesome things or interesting things could you do with it? Mm -hmm. I don't know, because they didn't do any of them. Um, and That's a shame. I was looking forward to this. The the, the original trailer kind of sold me on oh, it. Oh, it definitely sells you. Like everything you see in the trailer there with him doing all that, you go like, oh, I, I bet this can go some great places. Yeah, I mean, that's strong imagery right there. Right. But all that 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 cool stuff right there, that's in the first 10 minutes. 
Uh, I thought we were beyond this, Golly. No, no, no. Then it just turns into a comedy about what a loser he is. And I just watched this just not laughing even mm, once. That sucks. I, it was just, it was one of the most tedious experiences I had watching a movie where you go like, eh, usually Owen Wilson, even in a bad movie, can get something out of you. And it was just nothing. So it sounds like a huge waste of a canvas. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was intended. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving right along. This is Martin's number four worst movie of the year. It's going to start flashing until it's totally dark. So you can see that there's nothing to be afraid of. It's a bird. Ah, it's Martin, AK. <laughs> no, this is Boogeyman, uh, number four on your list. What didn't you like about this? Okay, one, that experiment. What, what was that supposed to do? I, I, I look look really cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look really cool when you're like, how is this? How, how is a flashing light going to help anybody get over being scared of the dark? I mean, it tells you the character doesn't have epilepsy. I guess I don't know. And the movie is filled with stuff like that. It's it's let's make this atmosphere can do cool things, even though it doesn't make any sense to what's going on. Uh, from what I understand, the parts that are actually from the Stephen King story. Uh, are just the beginning, the parts with David uh, Desmalchin, um, which is cool. That's actually a creepy part. But the rest of it is just stuff borrowed from everywhere else. And it is a movie where, OK, the enemy is the dark. Mm -hmm. Don't be in the dark. They live in a house where they don't turn the lights on. <laughs> Why? They don't pay their electrical bill. They just no. It's just for the, just to have the atmosphere. <laughs> Cause, cause you, cause it's one thing to say like, wait, we're in a new house and there's no bulbs here, but you see, you see lights around and they, they already know that the, 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 the creature is, a, is afraid of the lights and they will not turn lights on for shit. Oh my God. And the, the, the movie trucks along with a lot of these things. That's and, the worst when the characters are dumb and they just don't give a good reason yeah, why. Yeah. And it's, this manufactured scares and it's, and it's, uh, and it's another one of these kind of horror movies where the dad is just out of it for no particular reason. They go like, well, he's sad because his wife died. It's like, yeah, man, you, you've clearly had nobody in your family die. <laughs> because, yes, there is being depressed over that. But there's also life goes on, especially if you have kids and they're in danger. The, something kicks in that like I can be sad and still take care and still have a sense of, uh, of self-preservation or the preservation of my children. Now, Something I will tell you that is a very similar movie, but much better, is It Lives Inside. And, and I don't know if, how many people saw that. But, yeah. But that, yeah, I was like watching. I was like, wow, this is almost the same premise, except they're doing this. Is that the James uh, James Wan movie? No, no. It's uh, it's an Indian director. And the, okay. and the cast is mostly oh, Indian. Oh, right. That's the one with like the jar of nails yes, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, moving right along with Martin's number three worst film of the year. And this was going to be a quick one, I think, but we'll see. Number three. Home and Haven in your hearts together. May it be fulfilled each day. <laughs> yeah, ugh, what, okay. what was that? <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, now, now I can see how that, that kiss was fake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently they tried to make the excuse. It's like, oh, she didn't want, someone didn't want to travel somewhere to shoot it. I don't buy that at yeah, all. Yeah, me either. Yeah. But uh, that is uh, your number two, or sorry, number three uh, worst movie of the year, You People. Yeah. And this one isn't so much... <laughs> bad because of the comedy. It's bad because it's just offensive. And, really? And, and, oh, so you've not seen I it. I didn't bother watching. I was like an unfunny comedy with Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill. I don't need this in my life. And you know what? I probably liked, quote unquote, this movie more than most people. And I still think it was bad and terrible <laughs> and, and, and deserves to be on this list. Yeah, it's, man, it's, it's just full... It's so chock with stereotypes. And it's one of these movies where it's trying to be, hey, we're playing this stereotype off of this stereotype and the culture clash and see how funny it is and how how progressively edgy. And it's one where when you're trying to make a joke like that and you fumble and you end up being the thing that you think you're talking about. Oh, that's you, hard you, to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it just, and, and there's these terrible transitions 
these like uh, MTV and 1992 transitions that go on between scenes. Wow. And uh, yeah, and it's it's written and directed by Kenya Barris, who I've just come to almost despise his his writing because everything with him is is uh, I'm just I'm super pro black and I hate white people. Um, isn't it funny to say that? And it's like, man, when he worked on Blackish, which I thought was a brilliant show on ABC, I guess there's enough people collaborating mm -hmm. and having the network there that it's like, man, you you guys all worked together and crafted something. But him on his own, it's like, dude, really? <laughs> I mean, just the your your description there is just like it sounds flat. It's like, all right, you can say that out the gate, but you have to you have to add something to that. Yeah, and it's got Eddie Murphy, um, you know, actually. Acting. Um, hey, that's cool. <laughs> it is cool, except he plays, the, like you said, this this militant character who's who's so behind the times, like racist and behind the times that he would have to be somebody at least 10 or 20 years older than he is to be like that way. But it's just written so he can do that, so he can say those things. Another unfunny comedy yeah. bites the Martin Thomas dust. Well, this next one is not a comedy, but it's something that we actually talked about the first time, I think, that I hosted. Mm. We watched the trailer for it, and I'm, I, after hearing the reception of this movie, I'm not surprised that this is on your list. But this is Martin's number two worst movie of 2023. Glorious good morning to you on this Sunday. It is a very special day and has flowed through the ages of time. But we know and that's Martin walking in saying, I'll put my foot up your ass, uh, exorcist believer. What a shame, man. I David know. Gordon Green, like, I know. He, he, was he was supposed to be the chosen be, one. I know. I know and, he was. And and totally just dropping the ball in these <laughs> these really weird ways. It's like, I, I heard, like, a lot of stuff about this movie. And it's just like, oh, that's, it's another case of. That's it. That's that's all you're doing with this. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, you can see why uh, William Freakin uh, probably turned over in his grave. He was already <laughs> upset that David Gordon Green was going to remake. I mean, make this movie to begin with. Yeah, this and, sucks so bad. I'm going to stay dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. It's and I I think what hurt a lot of people is that it's got a good opening mm. with an earthquake in Haiti, and and it's done well. And it felt like, hey, we're doing something different. And this is on a good path. Yeah. We're, we're starting at a good spot. That sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a single dad just trying to raise his daughter. And she's she's with another friend. And they go off together. And then they can't be found for days. And that's and what the original Exorcist did was it didn't just take you into a horror movie. You got to know these characters. And then suddenly it was a mother whose child is sick and they can't figure out what's going on. And that's terrifying on its own. Mm -hmm. And so this mirrors that in that your child and another child are missing. And then they, they are found, you know, nasty and ratty and they got to get them to the hospital. And from that point forward, the movie plummets downhill. It, it goes to hell at, at that point. <laughs> it decides to go be a special effects show. It brings in their local uh, a, a chapter of Avengers of religious people. Um, <laughs> The Captain America of priests shows up. Well, it's just like, yeah, we're gonna have a rabbi and a and a, oh and a priest and, and, a, and, a, and a reverend and a, and, a, and a Mormon. It's just like we're gonna all come together. We need it needs the power of all of us. Uh, the biggest uh, travesty is that they bring in Ellen Burstyn, uh, who was the mom in the, in the in the original, and they completely waste her. Mm -hmm. I mean, what they do with her, you just like, wow. You, I mean. I'm happy for her to get a check, but she's she has continued to work. So it's not like she was broke. And, and this was it. a big movie for someone to to book. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's an exorcist. Movie. Sure. It, well, it's a big deal to like bring her back yeah. into it. And it's like you brought her that back for that. And yeah. you did that to her. Yeah. I heard she, they tried to like almost pull a Barbie, you know, lazily make a statement about the patriarchy. They're like, well, I was a woman, so I wasn't allowed to, yeah. to help my my yeah. my daughter get yeah. exercised. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It sounds like this movie needed to do more reps. Yeah. And and the the cameo, the the Easter they bring at the very end. Mm -hmm. it, it's. Like you already got a bad taste in your mouth, but the, the person they bring at the very end, like like as it's fading out, you go like, oh, f you." <laughs> <laughs> so so you would give this a, a f you 
yeah, this movie? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So that was one of the worst movies that Martin has seen this year, Exorcist the Believer. And number one, a movie that a lot of people know in the chat, so I'm not going to play the trailer. I'm going to play something related that will bring up a little bit of discussion of the future of this movie. This is Martin's number one worst movie of the year. <laughs> And that's not where Martin wants to be. Five Nights at Freddy's. I just thought that that was such a fun thing to include. It is it's fun. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd rather listen to that song than watch the movie. That's what they played during the end credits. You probably didn't oh, notice. Uh, yeah, I'd walked out by that time. <laughs> yeah. I was, long, I was gone. <laughs> uh, there's, there's actually a band who will get into it a little bit. I'm sure people want to hear your thoughts on, on the movie a little bit. But there's a band by the name of, let me look right here in my notes, uh, they, oh, the, the one didn't, it didn't upload, but there's, there's this Israeli band that actually they're called living tombstone Okay, and they've made a career out of making songs about five nights at Freddy's and <laughs> that guy did a cover for him. We'll talk about the music surrounding five nights at Freddy's in a second, but tell us why five nights at Freddy's was your number one worst movie of 2023. Does it even count as a movie? That's yes. That, that's, that's what I kept pondering. During the whole time, I was like, this feels like because it premiered on, on Peacock. And mm -hmm. I was like, that is a perfect place for it because it feels like a television movie uh, that doesn't really have a plot or doesn't make sense. And despite having a character that initially I thought was with Josh, Josh Hutcherson. Uh, all right. We got we got an interesting premise where he he's just he the, the, well, at least the, the thing that has him where he has to take this job is interesting. Uh, everything else about it is completely convoluted. The animatronics are never really scary. They don't even seem to be a big part of the story. Um, and and it, the whole thing where he needs to fall asleep to find his brother who's been missing for almost 20 years. <laughs> I was like, what, what are we even doing here? And, and characters that come up with like, questions that don't get asked. <laughs> that, 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 that was bothering more than anything. Mm -hmm. all, all these things that happen, it's like, you're not going to ask a question? The, you, you don't. They that... really overcomplicated it, like when it gets down to yeah. it. I mean, they, they could have just made this bottle film and instead they're like, no, we need to take all the Easter eggs from like four video games and just shove them in this movie. And honestly, I get why they did it. And I, I know why you were like, really, this movie is also on your worst of the year spoiler. But yeah, because I gave it a stinky rental because mm -hmm. I can, I can appreciate, you know, the, the design and how they looked and, and just all the mise-en-scene. Not that anyone, you know, working on this movie gave a about that <laughs> well it just it, it felt or like call it that it felt like the very definition of a cash grab like mm -hmm. when you say they put easter eggs in from all these different games it's like what's the point of doing that just to like make the the fans of the game go Ooh. it's because the story is built around like the secrecy of all these easter eggs because the more you go into it it reveals you know the whole thing about the children being possessed inside of these these animatronics and it, it doesn't really do anything for you it's like okay so what well and there's a i know there's a way to do that like to look at this and, and you tell me that it, it touches on all these things and this is what fans want to see. I was like, there is a there is a way to do this to where somebody who's never played this game can also enjoy it because because yeah. people who play the game enjoy it. There is a way to bring the rest of us in without going, well, f you, I'm just doing stuff that they like. Yeah. yeah, I don't care if it makes sense or not. I'm just sticking it in. There. Yeah. And, and let me be clear uh, with what I was saying, like they they didn't give a about pleasing everybody and making a decent movie in my eyes. Yeah. They felt about just doing something for the people who are hardcore into this. And uh, we we mentioned a movie that, or, or something that actually adapted a video game correctly, taking, mm -hmm. picking and choosing. There's Twisted Metal, there's yeah. the, the Blood Dragon remix. All, both of those compared to this are home runs. Oh yeah. Because this, this whole thing is just, there's too much stuff online that affected the director and the production of this movie. But the one thing I wanted to bring up and why I played that song is, did you know, in Five Nights at Freddy's, the, the internet as a whole, music is a huge thing. And I think that in the future, after we get a couple of these sequels, when they want to keep making money on it, I think we could end up with a Five Nights at Freddy's musical. 
Okay. Would you like, and, and I, I'd ask you if you'd like to see this, but I know the answer is no, but I kind of want to show it to you just to hear your well, thoughts. It, it, Julie, here's the thing. Uh, everything I've said about this movie, the one thing I didn't mention is that it is so incredibly boring. It, it, I, I mean, okay, crazy and stupid. That's one thing, but it's just so dull. I mean, I'm an hour in. I just looked at my buddy. And I was like, "How is this movie so dull?" I just, I just want to go to sleep. Yeah. And and I'm, I thought I was supposed to be seeing a horror movie, mm -hmm. and it's not scary. There's just barely anything happening. Yeah, the focus is on the needle inside of the haystack, which is the total <laughs> wrong way to do it. Uh, so, so a musical would at least have something going on. Well. Let's see what how you feel after I show you this. Uh, this is a song called Below the Surface from by Griffinilla. And the lyrics are not like they're not profound, but I think that this whole series could go in a direction of of a musical or at least incorporating some of these songs. And maybe just seeing this will give you an idea of why the movie is the way it is. Welcome to the circus. Yeah, circus is right. That mm. that the internet is filled to the brim. I only chose this. I j I wanted to bring it up a little bit because we've talked to, about this movie to death, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I wanted to find a new angle on it. And honestly, I think that this animation stuff it's bizarre as hell because it has this feeling of like a, a hot topic show aimed at like children, yeah, yeah. you know, and that tone makes no sense to me. Mm -hmm. But what people want, fans, they have like animations that fans have made and it's drama in between these animatronics mm. and issues that they have in in their uh, uh, working in their pizza place. OK, so so what do you think about the idea of Five Nights at Freddy's the musical? Uh, Well, I mean, what you just showed me was cool for <laughs> a song or two. Yeah, I, I don't know about a full 90 minutes of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. There were so many different movies that I wanted to bring up. And, and you know, I we don't have a lot of time to dwell on. But I wanted to take this time to show you some crazy Internet sure, shit that sure. I know you'd never seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, it was neat. I liked it. OK, so don't get mad at me. He liked it. OK. <laughs> All right. But that was Martin's bottom five or bottom seven of the year. 